Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm Titus with Mid Valley Mercenaries and today I'm going to walk you guys through my complete waterfowl Sitka system in hopes that I can help you guys find the most efficient system for you. So we're going to start with the early season and I'm kind of ranging this from 70 degrees to 100 degrees. I know that's a very big range but I'm kind of a hot nature person and so what I wear during this time, I'm going to go over everything and work all the way to late season and kind of show you different setups for different scenarios. So for early season around that 70 degree to 100 degree day temperatures and believe it or not in California opening day can be 100 degrees and it has been many times. This is what I wear right here, obviously not excluding the waders and I'll put those on in a little bit. I have here the core lightweight hoodie and you say hoodie, isn't that kind of hot for that degree in temperature? Well, to be honest with you, it's paper thin and uh, very, very light. It's meant to be underneath. That's why it's called core is the first word in that. And uh, so this is what I wear guys a lot. Um, and the early season. So what I do is underneath I wear just a regular cotton t-shirt or maybe like a polyester t-shirt, something that's light, doesn't really weigh much. I just don't like my bare skin being against this material, it's just me personally. And then when I go out there underneath, because I also don't like bare skin, I don't even wear shorts underneath my waders, I wear these, they're called heavyweight bottoms. They are a little bit warm during that time, but believe it or not, they breathe really well. And I don't honestly sweat that bad. And if I do, it just kind of soaks them up. So really, this is my setup. I wear these under my waders, the heavyweight bottoms. There's also another version I don't have. They're the Merino heavyweights. And those are what are really hot. So I don't even have those. But I wear this underneath because it's thin and I like wearing them under my waders. And then I wear this on top. What's awesome about this piece, the core lightweight hoodie, connected to this is the hood. And I like this for concealment. Like I said, guys, it's paper thin. It's not going to make you hot. It's got the hood on top to kind of cover your neck up and your ears as far as the brightness of it. If you know, you're wearing a face mask, face paint, or for instance, this has the face shield in it, which is something I wear all the time. I know Thomas doesn't mind calling through this. I personally do not like the sound of my calls or do not like calling on my duck calls through this, but you just zip this all the way up and then you got perfect concealment right there. You got the face mask on and then you got the hood on and it covers up your ears, your face, and all that's left is your eyes and it's perfect concealment early season. Throw your waders on and you're good to go. Now for calling, I just barely pop it down to the bottom of my chin, do my calling, and if they're coming in, they're locked up or whatever, I just throw it back up and just hold still. So that is my setup for a lot of the first, maybe first to second month of our season here in California. Uh, depending on where I go, it's different, but we'll move into that in a second. Now mid-season, I still wear this. This is always gonna be my base because I wanna have this hood and I wanna have this face mask always on me so I can um, have cover. I want, always want my neck and my ears covered up. I don't want anything to stick out when we're duck hunting unless of course you're in some type of blind then you really don't need to worry about it. But most of the time we don't have top cover and we're just trying to stay as concealed as we can. So this is always underneath my t-shirt, my core lightweight hoodie, still in mid-season and I'm going to call this 50 to 60 degrees temperature wise. This is still my base. Obviously, then I have my waders, which is really going to keep a lot of heat in, honestly, guys. The cool thing is with the waders, the zipper, you can zip down and you can breathe if you want to, if the water's not too deep. But we'll get into that in a second. Now, the only thing that might change here is I may throw on the core mid-weight zip tee, but I'll save that for the next level of weather. It has to be pretty nippy in the morning for me to wear that because that thing is so warm. So this is pretty much still what I wear now. We all know that in mid-season, we can get some thunderstorms and it may not be that cold, but you need something to waterproof you. This is where I'll throw in my Delta wading jacket. Now, this is not insulated. That's why I like this. It is waterproof. I've been in some unbelievable storms, but if it is mid-season and a storm comes in and you know it's gonna rain and it's not really cold, that's what's nice about this is I'm wearing whatever I want underneath at the time of year that I'm wearing it, I can throw this on and now I'm going to stay dry if it starts raining. Now there's a lot to this jacket, I've done reviews on it, but just real quick, it is called the Delta Waiting Jacket. It is non-insulated, which is my preference. Um, Travis has the 
Hudson jacket and it is insulated, but he doesn't feel like there's a big difference in warmth from this Delta weighting jacket to the Hudson. The one thing I love about this, I almost, when I first bought my first Sitka jacket, I almost bought the layout jacket until I was at a refuge one time talking to a guy about his jacket. And one guy had the, the layout jacket on and the other guy had on this jacket. And both of them, the guy that had it and the guy that didn't, said do not buy the layout for this type of environment. It is a layout jacket. It's better to be in a layout blind. But when you're out hunting the refuge or you're out hunting water, and not dry field, you want this jacket and I'll tell you why. Right here is the cuff, it's the waterproof cuff. Guys, I've done uh, videos on that, you can go check that out on the tests of this like in deeper detail, but it's a rubber cuff. I can crimp it as tight as I can get it and just lock it in around my wrist as tight as I can get it. And I'm telling you, you can put your hands under the water for 20 minutes and bring it out and you're not gonna have your sleeves wet. It's not gonna go through where your wrists are at. There's no water gonna get in there, trust me. I've done it over and over again. Hunting, picking up decoys. You know that feeling when you pick up your decoys or you're putting them out and you get your hands wet, then it slides up into your shirt underneath and then that gets wet and your whole sleeve's wet the rest of the day. That will not happen with this. That is the biggest reason I love this jacket. Also the pockets, you can put shells in. You can put shells in there. I put my throw my phone in here. If it's raining, it keeps it. It's not supposed to be waterproof, but I've never had issues with getting my phone wet. Zip that up. It's also got, because it is a wading jacket and you're more than likely wearing waders, the pockets are up here for your hands. And honestly, it's so comfortable just walking around or sitting in the blinds or, you know, in the toolies, wherever you're at, in your cover and put your hands up there and rest them. It's just a comfortable position. Honestly, I, I like it better than down here at my waist. But if you do want something at your waist, you can pull the pockets up and put your hands in there. It's also got the, the, the pit zippers. If you want to drop some heat, you can unzip there. So that works out really nice and keeps you a little cooler when it is ends up being a little bit warmer. It also has the hood. And what I do like about it is you can cinch it down. And the cool thing is it turns with you. It don't get locked up. Like as you turn your head, you're looking into the side of your jacket. No, the, the jacket is made to turn with you as you turn your head when you cinch it down. So like I said, I've been in some unbelievable storms with this jacket and never once had water go down inside my jacket. Once I zipped it all the way up to the neck, it's perfect. And that is, this gets used on a lot of different occasions, but, but not on every hunt. It's also got a zipper inside and that, that one is for your phone. Most That's I think what it says on the website if I remember right. This one actually is for to keep it dry because outside here is waterproof. If it's inside, it's good to go. Now moving on to mid to late season, so I'm just gonna call it mid late. I have a variance of temperature wise that I feel like has best suited me is 20 to 40 degrees. And these are the different things that I'll wear. Again, this is my base layer. And believe it or not, yes, I still wear these heavyweight bottoms. I don't go to the gradients yet because once you put your waders on, I stay plenty warm and that's me standing in water all day. That's not a boat or something else like that where you're not even in the cold temperatures. And one thing to note here I haven't mentioned yet is the rings on the end of all the gear so your shirt doesn't slide up when you're sliding another piece on. I really like that, the D loops for the thumbs. I don't leave these on when I'm hunting, but to put another piece of equipment on, I put my thumbs in there so it don't slide off or slide up my sleeve. Now this bad boy is one of my favorite pieces. The core lightweight hoodie that I'm wearing underneath this and this right here is my two favorite pieces because they're the foundation of everything else. If you don't have warm stuff and good stuff underneath, then it doesn't matter what you're you're wearing on top. It's at some point you are gonna get cold in my opinion. And I have in the past. I've worn all different kinds of gear. So this is the core midweight zip tee. And if you can see it's got this kind of material underneath, it's super warm. A lot of big brands use this now. Um, I think Kuyu also uses this too in some of their stuff. It's called the midweight, but this thing is so hot, Tom so would make fun of me because I'm always sweating and he's just doing fine or he's a little bit cold. But this thing, even by itself with the t-shirt underneath and not even the, the core midweight hoodie underneath, sometimes I won't wear this, depending, like I, like I said, if we're hunting in a blind that has top cover and everything, of course I'm not gonna wear the core lightweight hoodie because I'm not worried about my ears, my neck, I'm not worried about none of those things staying hidden because I've got the blind to be my hide. So I would just wear this. But this thing will keep you unbelievably warm. I, I like, it feels like if you throw a hoodie on, to me, a hoodie and this are just as equally warm as another. It's it's insane. Only thing is it doesn't have a hood, but it does zip all the way up to the top of your neck. 
and it keeps you really warm and I, I really like this. It just fits well and I like it a lot. So now I'm about to get really sweaty because I'm inside my office filming this and I'm already hot with just wearing this right here, but I'm gonna put on all the gear like I would on mid to late season. So what's crazy is this is the gradient hoodie and this is one of the most used pieces I probably have once it gets down into that 40 or below temperature. Again, like I said, I wear that certain, depending on what's, what kind of height I'm looking for, what I'm doing, um, I'll wear the base layers that I have underneath and that's just depending. Like I really don't, the core lightweight hoodie is really not doing temperature or giving me warmth technically. I'm just using it really for the hood and it's just another layer if, if I want to take off, if, if I get hot or whatever. But this thing from 20 to 40 degrees is always on me. This gradient hoodie right here it comes up. It's a, a, I don't know if it's a half zip, three quarter zip, what they call it. But you got a couple po a pocket here that I don't really use. You also, again, you got the D loop. If you want to slide another piece on, um, they always make sure that you can get it on easy and not have your sleeves go up in it. But this also has a hood. And I'll be honest with you guys, I'm going to tell you something here. Um, this does come with a face mask in it. I ended up cutting it out because I did not like how it went on my face. So let me explain that. This, this did have one. It was different material than the core lightweight hoodie. When you would turn your head in this to look at something, the material would stay locked and it would just rub on the bridge of your nose. So whenever you look, it wouldn't turn with you. Like the core lightweight hoodie, when you turn your head, it's all one movement, one piece. With this, it just sits there and rubs on the bridge of my nose and it would drive me nuts. And when you're trying to put other pieces on, get your hood on, it would hang up and catch. I just went, I cut it right out because I, I just couldn't handle it anymore. So anyways, um, Thomas did it first and I was like, yeah, good idea. I'm going to cut mine out too. Because like I said, I've got this one underneath. I can always pull up, get my face mask and it's way more comfortable and it moves with you and doesn't cause that kind of chafing on the bridge of your nose. That's And that's just my opinion again like i said i'm sweating basically right now this thing is so stinking hot you I, I literally cannot wear this until it's pretty cold even 40 degrees you don't want to hike out there to the duck pond wearing this i will not put this on i'll just wear my my core midweight zip tee or whatever i'll walk out there and then when i get out there after i set decoys i'll throw this on and it's perfect but if you walk out there and you sweat your rear end off in this thing you're, you're just never gonna catch back up to it. So it's very, very warm. All this other stuff I've had for two or three years now, but I just bought this last year. Thomas had it first. And by the way, guys, all this stuff is pretty true to size. You really need to go in a store and try it on. If you're not gonna buy in that store and you're gonna buy it online, at least go try it on in store because I'm telling you, you may wear extra large in this one jacket and then you may wear a double X in another one. So for instance, this right here, which is the Sitka Duck Oven. I like having a hood on me, so this does not have a hood, but there's things now and places now that I've been hunting that are so much colder to have this layer of down underneath and it really doesn't, it doesn't bind you up. You can still shoot, raise your arms well. There's no hanging up anywhere. It just gives a major level of warmth that I didn't really need before because I wasn't hunting in cold environments like I am now. And so I really like it, but it's got the pockets down here. And the thing is, this is not waterproof. So if you're hunting out in a storm or something, it's weather resistant so if it's spitting a little bit i've been out some times hunting and it starts sprinkling a little bit for 20 minutes and goes away no issues you're not going to get wet that easy it's got some tendencies to kind of resist moisture but if it's in a straight up downpour obviously eventually this thing's going to get saturated now i will tell you this it dries out really really quick but it is very hot i mean I'm saying it's right up there with the gradient hoodie, honestly. That gradient hoodie, again, I, I think this is supposed to be warmer if I remember right, but I feel like those two are like neck and neck. I could be wrong on that. Again, this one has the D-loops to put another layer on a jacket. Again, now if it's really cold, I'll have this on with my core stuff underneath, and then I'll throw my Delta wading jacket on top to stay dry. But other than that, this by itself, it is kind of nice not having a hood on your head. I've used this several times last year, and man, it kept me warm. It's a great piece. Last but not least, we're gonna do late, late season, and that to me is 25 degrees and lower, all the way down to zero or below zero. I'm not gonna put these on because I'm already sweating enough as it is, but these are the gradient pants, and I know it's gonna sound funny and really specific, but 25 degrees and down is the perfect time and temperature to wear these. I will not put these on under my waders unless it's that cold. Um, yeah, now, if you're dry field hunting, that's different, obviously. You don't have the insulation of the waders, 
but I'm talking about wearing these underneath waders or walking in somewhere, you will sweat your rear end off and then you'll just be, I won't say you're gonna be miserable because I've done it before, I just don't like having that sweaty feeling when you could have controlled it and not even done it. You may think you're gonna be cold, but I promise you when you put the heavyweight bottoms and your waders on, anything above 25, you'll stay warm. Like I said, when, I, when it's 25 and down, I put these on and you stay toasty and warm. Never once do you get cold. They have the loops at the bottom uh, so you don't, it doesn't pull up when you throw your waders on. So that's nice. They did upgrade these from when I bought them, um, which is fine. There really wasn't a big, they just tapered them down at the bottom, which they should have did that on these first ones. These are just wide open, you know, bottoms and they should have tapered them then. I don't know why they did that. Doesn't really make sense to me, but now that they're tapered, so they fit a lot more slim line and go right down in the boot without kind of trying to catch. But these are really nice. They got the the zip up with the button, and then you can the clamp and tighten it down as much or loosen as much as you want. So I'm gonna throw the waders on. <clears throat> talk about this for a second because a lot of people have asked, you know, what, how, with all that gear on, how do the waders fit and do they get tighter? And I will tell you, no, absolutely not. It doesn't matter. I can put every piece on here and I'm not going to, just to prove to you, because I, I don't need to. <laughs> but I'll just tell you right now, I've had most of these pieces on, I put these waders on, and yeah, I mean, it looks, you look a little puffed out on top, which I already do anyways, because I'm a healthy growing boy, but nothing really drags. So like, if you unzip on the Delta Zip waders, this is the best waders I've ever had in my life. I can't say that enough. I guess you could call this my third year review because people have been asking if I'm going to do that. I'm not really, I, I was going to do it, but then I was like, there's nothing changed. I love them just as much as I did the first day I bought them. So there's nothing to say. There's no updates. They haven't tore. If you want an update on if they've tore or leaked or whatever, they have not done none of that. There, There's my setup, okay? I could change this out, but that's, I mean, obviously you got the bolt coming out from the jacket on top, but it's not enough to to make me messed up or throw off my shooting or be uncomfortable or anything like that. On, on the waders, okay, there's so many good things about this. So number one, the boot. It's a lacrosse aerofoam boot. It's the most comfortable wader boot I've ever wore. And I'm gonna tell you this, if you're getting into duck hunting, you're looking into gear and you go get those cheap waders, like a friend of mine did, Caleb, he said, he talked about how the boots basically lacerated his shins. And that's the, that's the disadvantage of cheaper stuff. If that's all you can afford, hey, you make it work. I've did it. I've been uncomfortable. You know, you're good for an hour, two, three. By the fourth hour, you're hurting, you're sore, you're raw, whatever. That's all about the learning process, right? Certain socks, I like to wear the farm to feet socks underneath mine. These are tips I would like to give new hunters. I'm just trying to help you guys if you're trying to pick stuff out and you don't know because I'm just trying to help you guys buy the right pieces because when I watched his buying my stuff for big game hunting, it really helped me decipher what I needed or wanted. You're probably not gonna need all this or want all this. Maybe you just want the waders. Maybe you just want the gradient pants, whatever. But at least you know the opinions, the temperatures, the times of year to best use them. Uh, the next thing I like the most about is the knee pads. It's got, it's got padding in the knees. And my goodness, that has been a lifesaver. My knees are shot. And just to have that kneeling down to do something or with Rocky or pick a bird up or maybe maybe depending on what type of hide we're in, you need to get on your knees, it's been a lifesaver. You got the wader belt. Uh, that's for like the Texas rig. You can hook all your decoys to that and walk around and not have to try to hold everything in your hands. Next thing is these zippers. Now I got a story from personal experience and I'm almost done with this video. I put my cell phone in there a lot and uh, every time I hunt basically. Never had any issues. I've been in rainstorms, no waters that got in. But one time last year and I lost my phone because of this. It was uh, like an iPhone 10 or whatever. I was kneeling down in the marsh getting way down and I didn't know it but my pocket was completely submerged. Now, I thought I've done this before and this has never happened but it got completely submerged for a couple minutes. I stood back up, didn't think nothing of it, wasn't even thinking about it. Went to get out my phone, unzipped it, and it was just like water poured out of there. So what had happened is water seeped in there, and over time, being underwater long enough, it seeped in there and totally ruined my phone. Now they do say this on their site, they're not waterproof, but I was just trusting it, you know, and I pushed it beyond its capabilities. So just word of advice to that, you ever end up Having that, just be careful. The biggest thing about these waders is being able to drop heat. You're walking out to the blind or you're walking back from the blind and now you went out in the morning, it was hot or cool, and now you're coming back in the afternoon and it's hot. You can drop, open this up and number one, it's easier to take a leak for the guys. 
Number two, you can drop all that heat and trust me, it makes a huge difference. And not only that, just getting in and out of these waders is amazing. So that's one thing I really like about this. Anyways, guys, that is my Sitka waterfowl system, the whole complete system. That's every piece that I have. And yes, there is some certain things that would be different on different scenarios. I didn't show you every scenario because, I mean, you could go so many different ways with that and so many different opinions. But I just wanted to kind of show you guys what I do, the temperatures, and hopefully it helps you guys out and you can decide what piece you need or don't need or if you need the complete set. You know, anyone can afford it. You just got to take your time and buy piece by piece. I didn't buy all this at once. It is worth the money. Now, if you don't want Sitka, I totally get that. I don't know why people that don't want Sitka come watch these videos, but it does happen and people go off about the price. I, I've never regretted one single penny that I've put towards this gear. I'm telling you, it's lasted, it's, it's reliable. It keeps me warm, keeps me dry and it does what it's supposed to do and it's worth the money in my opinion. So let me know if this video helped you guys out. Give this video a thumbs up. If you guys have any questions about the gear, feel free to ask down in the comments below and I'll try to help you out as best I can. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and we'll see you guys on the next one.